Now we'll show a demo of how to create a load test in Visual Studio 2010. For this demonstration, we're going to have a look at what the effects are of the different test mix models that we covered just a moment ago. You'll see how each one affects the behavior of the virtual users as they exercise the system using the load test. For this example, I've created a new test project and added to it a unit test file as well as a few load tests. Looking at the unit tests, I've simply created three very simple test methods, one of which tests some string concatenation, another one tests date time now, and a third one tests the date time .utc now method, which it turns out is actually much faster than date time now. Let's look at how we can create a load test that will run these three different unit tests together and see how they perform. To start, we'll say file, add, new load test, and we'll walk through the load test wizard as we just saw. The first thing we can do is specify a scenario and decide whether or not we want to use think times. In this case, we'll just call this unit tests and we'll say we don't want to use think times. Next, we can specify our load options. A constant load of 25 users will be fine. And here we'll choose the different test pace that we want to use. You'll see that there is a dialog shown here that tries to indicate how these tests will be run. And you can see that when it's based on the total number of tests, the users will generally pick random tests to run at any given moment, such that overall, the test mix is correct with the percentages that are chosen. If we choose the second option, we'll see that the tests are chosen by user, such that the mix is still within the percentages that we've chosen, but certain users may only run one test while others may run another test over and over again. If we use the user pace model, we'll see that in a given hour, each user will run the test the same number of times, but at any given moment, different users will be running different tests. And in fact, ideally, in any given moment, our percentages will be followed. And finally, we have the sequential test order, where you can see that the users will simply run the test in the exact same order each so that at any given moment, all of the users will tend to be running the same test. We're gonna go ahead and keep this based on the total number of tests. Next, we'll specify our test mix. To do this, we can add, and we'll add all of our tests. And then we can set the distribution. For this, I think we'll set the test strings to be 50% and leave the two date time now calls to be the other 25% each. We'll leave the network settings as their default. Since we don't have any web tests, there's no browser settings to deal with. And now we can add a computer. Here I would again recommend that we add localhost and we can select all of the counters here. And then for our duration, we'll just run this for two minutes and we can finish. Now in this case, I've already set up several of these tests using the settings shown here. So I'm just going to cancel and look at one of the tests that we've already set up. You can see that it has the test mix that we established and it's using a constant load of 25 and it's collecting all of these counters. Now you've seen how to set up a load test in Visual Studio 2010. In just a moment, we'll look at how to run these tests and how to analyze the results.